Uh, sometimes uh, in a function table or k map may contain entries uh, for which it is value is unknown. Uh, two cases are for that case uh, uh, input values for the mean term will never occur or the output value for the mean term is not used at all. Then in the k map we may specify those mean terms as uh, unknown or don't care. We put uh, x instead of a 0 or 1 in the k map uh, and uh, we interpret x either 0 or 1 and that's our convenience uh, uh, for toward uh, minimizing the cost of the large implementation. An example of a such don't care condition is that if we deal with a binary coded decimal which Consider is a zero through nine, then a four bit binary encoding uh, for from one zero one zero through one 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 one. Those six cases uh, never occur, so we put uh, those mean terms as x as don't care conditions. So here is another example. We want to define a function f uh, with the four variables, uh, and the function becomes a uh, 1 when BCD input is a 5 or more. And uh, since BCD input is limited from 0 through 9, the remaining 6, uh, we don't use that. Then, KMAP for this function f is that when input is a 5, 6, or 7, 5, 6, or 7, or 8, 9, the function becomes 1. And the when input is a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which never occurs, so we put x instead of a 1 or 0. Then uh, in finding simplified expression, we could interpret x either 1 or 0. So we interpret x as 1 if that provides a bigger size prime implicant. Otherwise, we don't have to use x. So in this K map, instead of uh, covering ones alone, which result in uh, this expression, then we have a gate co input cost of 12. Uh, but if we utilize uh, x as a 1, then we find a bigger prime implicant, uh, which gets more simplified expression and end up gate input cost 7. So whenever we have a don't care conditions, uh, as needed, though, we interpret as 1 if it results in a bigger size of prime implicant. Otherwise, we can simply ignore that. Remember, we have two standard forms. One is a sum of products. So far, we have used that as a target of the simplified solution. Another standard form is a product of sums. So product of sums, uh, if that is the target uh, of the optimization, we do use a K-map, but slightly different ways. Uh, so let's let me explain that by example. Suppose the function f is defined as this way. So we have a min list of min terms. The sigma d specifies uh, the don't care condition min terms. Uh, so let's uh, first construct a K-map out of this. Then uh, we have a min term 3, min term 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 as a min term list. And so we have a three don't care conditions. So min term 1 is don't care, min term 4 is don't care, and the min term 6 is don't care. If our target solution is a product of sums, uh, then uh, we group uh, zeros instead of ones. Uh. So let me change the color of the pen and put zeros uh, in corresponding locations. So we have uh, zeros, zeros. Uh. So those entries uh, with the uh, value zeros is actually max terms, not mean terms. So if target solution is a product of a sums, uh, then we identify max terms and group them 
and they do a similar procedure procedures uh, for simplifying the solution. So here first we find the prime implicant by grouping zeros. Uh, remember don't care condition could be interpreted either zero or one. So if uh, that gives us a bigger size PI then interpret it uh, as needed. Uh, otherwise we can simply ignore that. And the uh, prime implicant with the uh, zeros uh, max terms, the four corners is one prime implicant. Uh, and another prime implicant is those two, but if we interpret the don't care as zeros, uh, we have a bigger size uh, prime implicant. Uh, so by having those two prime implicants, uh, we have covered uh, all zeros uh, needed. Uh, and uh, expression for prime implicants with uh, max terms, uh, we write a little bit differently. So for this guy, again, same way we have a variable w and x do not, do not change, but a variable y and z value changes. So a variable y, z disappear, but w and x remain. So we have a w and x uh, to express uh, this prime implicant with the max terms. Uh. But the W is a value 0, so if this is a mean term, we put a bar, but this is a max term, so we don't put bar. So value of X is 1, so we put X bar. And since this prime implicant is grouping of max terms, so we put plus sign to represent that prime implicant. Similarly, for four corners, expression for that prime implicant is uh, x or z. And uh, we put them in product uh, so that we have a product of sums solution. So product of sums we do very similarly but we group max terms uh, instead of uh, mean terms. Uh. So optimization algorithm is as follows. Uh, as we explored in previous video. The first, find all PIs. Second, identify essential PIs among PIs. Then, the optimized expression is first include all EPIs. And then, select minimal cost set of non-EPIs to cover all the remaining mean terms if it's not covered yet. That's a optimization algorithm. When you select a prime implicant, non-essential prime implicant, here is the selection rule. So minimize the overlap among prime implicant as much as possible. In particular, in the final solution, make sure that each prime implicant selected includes uh, at least one mean term not included in any other prime implicant uh, selected. Uh, actually, this part is an uh, essential prime implicant. So, let's uh, apply those selection rules uh, to find the simplified solutions. Uh, given function f, k map is uh, on the left hand side. Uh, so, let's first identify all pi. So, this is one. Here's another PI, another PI, another PI, and another PI, another PI, and the one more, which we may easily overlook that. So we have identified all PIs. Second step is uh, identify EPIs among PIs. Uh, EPI, essential prime implicant, is uh, the one which has at least one cell which is not shared by any other. So in this case, this one is not shared. So this prime implicant is essential. This one is not shared. So this one is a essential prime implicant too. So here, this is a prime essential and this is essential. So uh, Simplify solution should include those two essential prime implicants, and then using non-essential ones, uh, we have to cover all remaining mean terms uh, with a minimal set of uh, non-essential PIs. So, choice is uh, this one and this uh, two 
then we cover all min terms with a minimal set of uh, non-essential PIs. So here is another example. So simplify this one. Then first we identify all PIs. So we have a uh, this is a PI in uh, interpreting those two don't cares as one, which get us a bigger size. So here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. And here's another one. Next step is uh, we need to identify EPI. Remember EPI is uh, the PI with at least one min term not shared. So we have a uh, these are uh, as a uh, essential prime implicant. So this is the only essential prime implicant. Uh, so next step is a uh, cover all ones uh, mean terms uh, with a minimal set of uh, non-essential prime implicants. Uh, so our choice is uh, this one and uh, this one. As you can see, we don't have to cover this don't care because we could interpret it as a zero.